wrong side of the pond. He is DJ Schweitzer. I am Jeremy Lance. Uh, hey, bud, it's midnight again. We've 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 done it again. We've started a podcast super late, late at night. No breaking news this time. Just slothfulness. <laughs> I mean, we I mean, we I, maybe we we're kind of holding out for breaking news. It is it is Thursday, and FC Cincinnati has been having some very interesting Thursdays as of late. So. Yeah, definitely. I Another, mean, there was I, there was breaking news. It just showed up a lot earlier in the evening. Sure. Yeah, we'll we'll blame that, right? That's that's totally the holdup. We just um, we just missed it. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. Internet connections or anything along those lines. Uh, but we are we are here. We are recording uh, past midnight, so we'll do our best to make this both speedy and coherent as we try to wade off and fight off any sort of um, you know need to lay the head down on the pillow i, I mean know. it'll probably still happen it, that bourbon i see you sipping on probably isn't gonna help too much yeah this mccann 10 is not gonna it's not gonna improve that situation yeah it, it it's probably not will. an upper no not how i would describe that either um <laughs> uh other things that aren't uppers fantasy nope definitely a downer no one ever gets up about that uh maybe tyler kelly uh eighth show in the row for him on top ole's Ole can't drive, uh, still top on the table there. I improved two places to 41, pretty mass still. You fell two places to 86th. There's your fantasy update. And let's just get into this late night soccer soiree with a temp check. And I loved when you sent me the running order for tonight. I got really excited seeing another team's temp check that wasn't mine mostly, but either one of ours, like, (laughs) that we could dissect how another team's fan base might be feeling about a particular situation. And I'm just, I'm really excited that it's not Spurs this time around. Yeah. You know, I, I think looking at everything that's going on and, and obviously we'll talk about, you know, a little bit about Manchester city, who is kind of on suddenly this rocket ship to the, to the moon as we, as we saw uh, last week, as they started to really uh, explode and all of a sudden take this this lead and, and create this gap at the top but the other story within that is like liverpool the defending champions the kind of uh, team that is supposed to you know it's theirs to lose right now uh Premier league titles they i mean they're in fourth place they're in fourth we'll start with that they are in fourth place they are 10 points back of Manchester City. Manchester City have a game in hand. That actually could de- technically be 13 points. Just 13 make points sure you, make sure you don't call it 13 already because Klopp will really really dislike that. Oh yeah. He'll give me that crazy angry bird uh freak out face that he gave that one fourth official back in the uh, day. Yeah. I mean, did you hear he actually did this a, a reporter talking to him in this pre-match press conference was talking about as if city already have a 13 point gap. And of course it will likely be a 13 point gap whenever they play the match that they have in hand still. I believe it's a match with Everton. So it is not a gimme match. Okay. Fair enough. And that hasn't exactly been the easiest of matches for city of late, but that said Klopp was super testy about it. Like went directly at uh, the reporter who who staged the question to him in the first place. And this is like that that side of Klopp and a great way to really provide like uh, a good temp check to where Liverpool are right now. Uh, when it, when you get this flavor of Klopp, Klopp is like everyone's yep. f- other favorite manager. Like the, the guy who you, you wish was managing your team all the way up until the point when his team is not playing well. And right. Liverpool are, are decidedly not like they aren't like having a bad run of form or they're just taking a bit of a dip. Like they're really playing not well at the moment. When that happens, he is the worst. Like he's super condescending. He will like uh, avoid answering questions. Uh, and you don't see those like those chompers flashing at you in a, a big smile. They're like, mashing at you in a way that you feel like he's going to bite off your face yeah asking him a question he doesn't like 
Yeah, I mean, Klopp is, and he was for the past two years at Liverpool when everything was going great, like the cool, fun uncle. Everyone has that cool, fun uncle that's like always just like a hit at parties and is always funny and he's always like trying to pal around and like, you know, hey, like letting you like skirt some rules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then you also, most people, if if you're like me and you have like 18 uncles, uh, no, I'm not Mormon or Catholic, but somehow a lot of uncles. Um, you also have an uncle that's just not fun to be around. Who's got a short fuse, who, uh, you know, is just just not in the mood for anything ever. And yeah, that that's like, that's the clop we have now. We have the not fun. We went from having fun, cool uncle clop to now having... Like that uncle that you just don't want to even be in the same house as. Yeah, um, I'm not saying this uh, as someone who has few uncles and I'm trying to blame any of my uncles because I don't believe any of them to be this way. But they can very oftentimes be the same uncle that like those two uncles yeah. you were describing. Like um, there's a, there's an episode of Friends that always comes to mind when you when people describe this like that almost the Jekyll and Hyde type where it's um fun Bobby where uh, it's this guy that Monica dates in the show for a little bit and everyone loves him and he's super fun, but it turns out he's a raging alcoholic and that's the only reason he's fun. (laughs) And so as soon as you remove the alcohol from the equation, like fun Bobby actually is a depressing like schmuck and no one actually likes him. And you kind of wonder like if, if Klopp's alcohol is his team being like unstoppable and world beating, but the minute that they're not, he's no longer fun. Bobby. He's like angry Jurgen and he is there to ruin your life. And like, it's, it's the, it's the Liverpool that nobody talks about, right? Like we, we almost give them a pass mm-hmm. because we don't mm-hmm. want to, to think that this is what it can sometimes be. And, um, I don't know. Like you look at that 10 point gap and you, you go, Ooh, this isn't a team that looks like they're going to like yank themselves out of that. Right. Like n- never mind that city have to drop points to make it happen. Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff would have to happen and then they're in fourth. So it's not even just city dropping points. They have to, they need to hope that three other clubs all of a sudden start trending downwards. They also have to hope that they trend upward faster than a Chelsea or uh, Everton that is like literally right on their heels. Everton has two games in hand and I think is what only three points back of them right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we go with the thing that Klopp doesn't want us to do, uh, Everton's actually possibly ahead of them. <laughs> so right. of course one of those groups of three points is, uh, is that city match. So, you know, you got to give it, it's someone's getting those points. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, there's there's cracks in in the foundation too, right? Like you know, their their injury issues are well documented, but there's also the the ever non ending rumors of Suarez potentially being on his way out, right? And you know, there's there's talk of unrest within the ranks within all of their attacking options. For me, uh, not for me, no. Um, uh, Minamino just went out on loan. Uh, you yeah. know, he, he's at Southampton and he got off to a flying start at that, at that, but that's, that's a lot of people to try to get, keep happy. And this is always the difficult part. You know, we, we talked a lot about the length of time that Liverpool performed at this elite level and they were due for a dip. And now they're experiencing some of the woes of success mm-hmm. where it's tough to manage all the egos and, and it's all like swirling and hitting them at one time, like too many yeah. matches, injuries, uh, you know, unhappy players. Yeah. yeah, speculations of players wanting to leave or get, you know, sign pre-contracts with Barcelona. You you also, you know, have within all of this, like it, it clearly showed in January that they're not really in a position to throw around a ton of money to improve the situation. You know, they, they had to go get defenders and they, they literally had to go get a defender from Preston. Not because that pr- defender uh, is, is incredible, but because they they can't really afford to fork out a bunch of money 
for like uh you know from somebody at like Atletico Madrid or something like that. Yeah. I mean, you'd expect that they the, the buy that they made from Preston is one that makes sense for them in the longer term. Like Liverpool doesn't strike Maybe. you as a club that like, hey, we're just going to go out and buy a warm body just because, you know, they were like, we Are need you- a warm body. But like we're going to buy someone that, you know, hey, if it, if it, it it's not going to pan out immediately, like, well, we'll have purpose for this down the line. Like, I think that's what they were trying to do there. But maybe that's me like maybe. Trying, to, trying to justify like them not having their ducks in a row when it seems feel- just, it's, it seems tough to even fathom that this club who's been so damn good for so long has fallen off. And I'll be honest and I'll let you get to your point here in a moment. It makes me feel good because <clears throat> this fall that Spurs have had this year has been a, a, a tough a tough thing to have happen. And I know you've experienced that, too. But that Liverpool are also experiencing this, like a, a really wild fluctuation in their performance levels. Like it's go, it's not just my team. It's it's also Liverpool. It's also City. It's also Chelsea. Right. A, a lot of these teams are feeling all of the pitch. above. All of the yeah. above. I mean, we we. We're not even mentioning Arsenal because they're 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 so far down the tracks that it's like, uh, oh yeah, I forgot you were there. Um, no, I, the only point I was trying to make is I just felt like that was the warm body thing was just a, a feel like that was a veiled shot about the time that Chelsea uh, paid all that money for Danny Drinkwater just because they needed an English player. Mm. <clears throat> it wasn't veiled, uh, and it certainly wasn't intentional. But I'll take credit for it even if it wasn't. Go for it. Um, yeah. So they, I mean, a lot of this talk comes off of the heels of not only where they stand in the table, but, you know, we talk about that 10 point gap, that 10 point gap, we got to physically see what that looked like over the weekend when City and Liverpool played and City absolutely outclassed them. Yeah, it was a, it was a walking off the pitch, right? Like, yeah. They they weren't even in the same class or consideration. Um, I didn't get to watch this match live. I, w- I watched it back later and was truly like I knew the result and I was kind of anticipating it to be a little heavy handed based off of the reactions I was reading. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they steamrolled them in a way that I, I'm just not you are not used to seeing the side get steamrolled. And I say that as like Liverpool got their asses handed to them in the first couple of weeks of the season by who was that Southampton that smacked them around? It was someone lower down the uh, table. Villa. The, yeah, Villa. Aston Villa, right? So I don't know. It's um it, it's just it's it's been such a weird year and they are an embodiment of that in a way that I don't think I any of us really expected them to be. Yeah, and you know, you look at that city match, you have a guy in Allison having such a terrible match. Um and I, I stand by, he was one of the main reasons that they became a title contender and that they won that title and that they won that Champions League because that was one of those key final upgrades that they had to make that's to put them in that upper level. And now you have that guy having, you know, an, an injury plague suspect season. It's tough when everything seems to coalesce and become a problem at one time and Liverpool are experiencing that in a way that they've been lucky to not have experienced the last couple seasons. And those are the things you need to have come together to win championships. So, so tonight we wanted to, we wanted to kind of talk about at this point as we're, we're really into the throes of the second half of the season. What does a successful 2020 2021 campaign look like for these clubs and i guess we'll we'll start with liverpool uh, since we're already on the topic at this point what does success look like for them is it uh, you know it, they're 10 points adrift so you almost you know uh, most of the pundits were after the match writing them out of of the title race so then if you're not going to win the title what what can you do to actually walk away in May and go successful season? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think what they would consider uh, successful, and uh, at least at this point, and what their fans would consider successful, I think are different things. 
Um, and I think we could say the same thing about that for any of the teams that we'll evaluate here. But I think if they finish top four and make a decent yeah. run in the Champions League, like I think I think yeah. that's enough, right? Like they're. But fans- I mean, have they have they had that sham? Have they if they had that like champagne taste now, where like it's it's all or nothing with their fans, though, right? Right. Like I mean, their fans were all two or back, nothing. Two seasons in a row. Their fans. Yeah, they were all or nothing. <laughs> they were all or nothing when they were finishing like barely inside of the top four. Yeah, so I mean, I think I think they they will never not enjoy the taste of champagne. Um, and that's what I was getting at and saying like what their fans would consider a successful year. I don't I don't think is going to be what the team should be, especially all things considered with injuries and <clears throat> you know the like. But so yeah, it's, I think it's for for the fans, it's trophy or bust. Oh, for sure. If you yeah. win the FA Cup, the Champions League, or this season sucked. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of those things is going to have to be something they can deliver on. And it's, it's an uphill battle, I think for, for all of them. So, um, yeah, but I, I think if they, if they can get themselves into those positions, uh, the board will at least feel happier about potentially spending some money down the road. Yeah. It, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of pans out. And I, and I, it just dawned on me, they're, they're actually out of the FA cup. Um, so it's yeah, really it was, champions league or bust. I was checking that. And trying to scroll through all this, like, wait a minute, are, are I said that, enough? and then I was like, wait, didn't they play United? And I'm pretty sure I watched United play like on Tuesday. Yeah, nope, they're out. They are out of that competition. I'm just loving the live editing. I'm gonna leave this right where it was. Leave it in. Leave it just raw dog. This one. Um, let's let's go down the list though. Let's continue on with this. Obviously, City. It's a, it's just simply about hanging on, winning the title. Uh, obvious. Uh, well, it is it. I, I actually I, I say that and then I caught myself because it seems like for Pep and it seems like for the board, it's Champions League or bust, right? Yeah, That's I mean, kind of the I think they need. They're a club that like they have to have a trophy. Like a season without <clears> a trophy <throat> is disaster zone. Um, and so like they need that. But if they could pick one. Just one, it would It'd be the Carabao be Cup. It. Yeah, it's the Carabao Cup. No, it's that Champions League final that they just can't seem to get themselves into. And I think everyone in that organization knows that's what they're doing. And I think, listen, it, it, as far as the right time to find momentum, they've won 14 straight matches right now. This is the time to get hot, right? Like, you don't want to get mm-hmm. hot in in october that's and worth nothing and flame out now ask like, everton ask spurs ask yeah, you know right. half the people that's who jumped the table through the first half of this year but i think they're hitting a good stride right now whether they are better than Bayern, whether they're better than you know a, a madrid whether they're better than you know some of these other teams that are having like this is a good year Bayern aside, maybe Juve, this is a good year, I think, for them to make that run in European football. So I think that's where they'll have their eyes set. And if that means they have to give up some ground in the Premier League, I think Pep would probably do that. Okay. Uh, Manchester United, what constitutes a successful season? Is it, again, again, kind of the same line? They have to win something. So like an FA Cup would be great. That would be successful. For Ole, that was something he can hang his hat on. Uh, you know, it, it's Manchester United finishing top four, while not always a given uh, recently, uh, still not really like a hang your hat on kind of achievement. Yeah, um, I'd say that's accurate. I, I, I like I didn't even know what to write down for them because they're such a enigma club and like what their desire is right now like obviously they want to get back on their perch but that's kind of been their problem for some years now for a few years now their desire and their reality have been miles apart (laughs) yeah so i i think yeah top four finish and you know a cup final at at a minimum i think would keep everyone's in a, a pretty good spot about Ole keeping keeping control of the reins. Um, Leicester City. I think this one's actually pretty simple. 
it's to not pull the 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 drop that they did last season and it's to stay top four i literally i just put don't repeat what happened last yeah. year <laughs> I, I think it's as simple as that it's like don't don't completely crater uh down the stretch and 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 fall out of the top four. Uh, it, it, it's about getting that Champions League football uh, next season. Um, yeah, I mean, for them, yeah, I, think it's, that's, I think that's super simple. For them, it's all about trying to continue this upward trajectory. And they don't necessarily need a, another sharp spike upward. They need that, you know, slow, angular momentum that will help them ride this to a a longer term level of success rather than just a a brief blip into the upper echelons of of English football and even European football. So yeah, if they can keep themselves in Europe, I think they will be in a very good spot. Um, I guess this one's on me. I got to answer this next one. Chelsea, uh, success. I mean, top, Top four is like baseline. Hey, the sky isn't falling. Um, success. So like that kind of has to ha- find a way to happen. And then, you know, the last time we lost an FA Cup final, we won it the following year. So maybe we'll repeat that again. We lost last year. Maybe we can win it this year. That would be a huge uh, exclamation point on the season for Tuchel to grab some hardware, uh, you know, in his first, you know, handful of months, uh, on the, on the gig. So it's, it's top four is like the bare minimum to where it's like, I didn't even say like top four is like a success as much as like top four is like, we've not completely failed. Right. So I, I think it's that, but I mean, I think this FA Cup run is pretty important. Hmm. I think Champions League, I think even Tuchel in his like introductory press conference was pretty realistic about our chances in Champions League. Uh, so I, I don't even think that's really even factors in. That's a foregone conclusion. We have at, we have Atletico Madrid right out the gate here. What in like next week or whatever? Yeah, they're a bit form at the moment. Yeah. Um, your club. What about your club? What's success? <sighs> I, is it is is everything going to come down to the Carabao Cup? You guys just got knocked out of the FA Cup. You are a bit adrift. Is I mean, you're most clubs are out of the title race uh outside of maybe like three uh is it is it the carabao cup is that the hopes and dreams of spurs is getting that piece of hardware for the first time since like what 2013 yes (laughs) um i i think if we finished top four like we somehow crept in there and didn't win Mm -hmm. the cup like the fans could placate themselves this Um, is gonna be a tough top four to get into it like really it is, is an achievement to do it. Yeah, and I, I think, and, and we've not really said this yet. Like I think all these teams that we've talked about, and and even those uh, some of the who are yet to come, I think are still in contention of doing that. Given how everything's unfolded this year, I think anything is possible. But yeah, I mean, I, I think Spurs are are getting further and further away from that top four target. They, I, I, they are slowly shifting like all the eggs into that Carabao Cup final basket against a city side that just are starting to look indomitable. And I don't know. Um, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it might be smarter for me to lower my expectations to find any sort of success out of this year because, as brightly as it started, it has gotten very dark and and very quickly and. It's difficult to see them really doing anything noteworthy, let alone positive in a way that will get me excited. Um, it's funny. Your view of success is based on that kind of stuff. I, I know some sports fans, their personal view of success is uh, – going the other direction, cratering and being done with Mourinho by summer. 
Oh, man. I'm just trying to ride him for anything we can get out of him at this point. <laughs> he's he's going to exit exit the door next season yeah. one way, Egg shape, or form. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about Everton? This one I found a little bit hard because I feel like I feel like the easy answer is European place, right? Yep. Get into Europa, and that and yep. that makes sense. And I think ultimately that's probably where I land. Um, but I do feel like they're they're once again finding themselves on the cusp of like possibly aspiring for more and like wanting more and hopefully and maybe getting to that next level. Um, it, yeah, FA Cup will be. A little difficult. They did draw uh, today. Uh, they now in the in the quarterfinals are getting Manchester City, so that that became a little tougher. Uh, but, but I guess you're gonna have to face a team like that at some point, anyways, if you're trying to win the thing. Um, uh, like I don't know. I think I think it's it is as simple as European place, right? Yeah, I mean, I think. What's sad for them, like the the start to the year they had, they'll they'll want more than that. But I think, rightly so, Ancelotti will being like, "Hey, this is a process, and we can't get too far ahead of ourselves here. Like, we need to take the steps to get there." He seems like that type of practical coach, and mm-hmm. I, I think they're they're making the right. You know, and we've said this about Everton before, but. They're making the right steps in the right direction or in order to get to that type of place. And they have a manager who's who knows how to get there. He he knows what it takes. I I, I think they're if they can get into a Europa League spot at a minimum, then they're on the track that they need to be on. Um if they fail to do that, I think it will increase pressure on on Carlo to to achieve something next year or he will face the can or, or maybe he would even say like, Hey, I, I can't do what I think I can do here, but right. I've hit I, my ceiling. I, I think that's where they are right now. Like they, they need Europe in order to continue the climb that they're attempting to, uh, to execute. Finally. Arsenal. <laughs> what I'm is enjoy- success for them at this point? Like it, it's crazy, you know, of the three new manager, like the three managers we talked about that are like the former players coming back. You had Lampard, you got Ole, and you got Arteta. Well, Lampard's already been fired. Ole, it's just a roller coaster of ups and downs, some good highs, some low lows. He's still there. Um, but it's Arteta that is the one out of that group that actually has already picked up a trophy. And yet he's the one now that also seems to be edging closer to the chopping block or something, because at least in the fans mind that, I don't know. I just, I I feel like there's moments where this club is, or this fan base is super behind him. And there's moments where they're super ready to be done with him. And I feel like we're in the latter once again. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's facing the same type of issue. I think that, uh, United fans faced when Sir Alex left the club and there's this, this, this power vacuum and void and lack of consensus as to who should be the person leading them forward and that's that's a tough thing to do after such a long time with a patriarch who's going to be your beacon and your guide in the darkness. Well, even when things get bad, you can be like, well, at least we have arson, right? And and now that that's gone, no one knows like who here's who the beacon should be, and that ma- that makes the the job infinitely harder uh, because you're you're constantly trying to get everyone back in and pointed and believing and hoping again. And I don't know. I mean, I, I I think Arteta has, he he always had the hardest job of all these guys that we've talked about, right? Like, yeah, no, absolutely. Chelsea spent a a crap load of money for Lampard. Um, Poison chalice, but it happened. Yeah. Ole has United's perpetually open blank checkbook. Um, And, and, you know, you look, 
at, at Arteta, and he's while well, he's been given money, it's not a war chest. Um, right. it, it's not like Arsenal have some plethora of youth options that are coming through the first team and are going to proliferate and recreate the, the the team in the way that Spurs were able to ride that wave of their their own youth. Um, I, I think it's just a sign of how damaged the the club actually is. And like they've made some mm-hmm. bad moves as they've tried to get this ship floating again. And I think Arteta's learning, but it's it's just he he's got the hardest challenge of all these guys, uh, despite the fact that he managed to win a trophy with him. So if they get back up to European place, is that still even good enough? Like a Europa spot, is that even good enough for success at this point? Yeah, I mean, well, I, I think now, yeah. At the beginning of this season, they'd or, all say no. I, like I, 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 and I, and not to say it's not kind of the case with some of the other clubs on this list, and maybe we've been a little too too nice with them and a little harsher here. But like, have we passed the point where there is a a pathway to success for this season? For Arsenal, I don't know. I mean. I I feel like I, I'm in dangerous territory here because with how close Spurs are to them right now on the table, if I say that Spurs have a pathway to some sort of success, I feel like it would be a bit naive for me to not say the same thing of Arsenal. And but so then is it the same? Is it is it get top four? Because that 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 seems quite difficult from from coming from tenth. It does. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to say, like, here's what, what's going on. The only other thing that I could think that, that could rescue this season, they're still in the Europa League. That's the only other competition sure. they find themselves in. That is a winnable competition. Like, for any yep. English team who finds themselves there, if you can manage to handle a couple tricky away days, you could find yourself in a European Cup final playing for yep. a Champions League place in no time. So... I mean, they, they've actually found, they found themselves there, what, twice in the past, like recent history, and it hasn't gone well. Yeah, it <laughs> has not. But look, it's it's a pathway to Arteta. Look, and if they get into the Champions League, should they pull it off? That's that's a huge thing for them from a from a player recruitment standpoint. It, it allows him to fast forward this project in a way that sure. he desperately needs to have happen. Yeah. I mean, that'd be quite the lifeline to win that. Uh, obviously, getting that accolades of uh, of winning a, a European Cup, um, something that Arsenal has never done. Um, you know, against Lehman. Uh, I don't know if you knew this. Uh, there's only one London-based club with a European Cup. I, they have they have a couple of them. They have three of them. Um, they, there's a chant about it. I don't know if you heard it. We're just talking about the European Cup, or are we saying any cup in Europe? A European Cup of the competitions that actually exist presently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, fine. Because you guys have what won like a cup winners cup or something like that, or one of those yeah, ones? it's kind of like the the forerunner to the Europa League. Um, whatever. We're not counting it. Uh, but yeah, so for Arsenal, it is. Either get back into Europa for next year, or what, or, or make that deep run in Europa and win it. I, I put in here kind of just uh, an FA Cup EPL uh, match whip around. I don't know if there was any matches you wanted to mention. The Everton United one was pretty wild. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was something. Other than that, I got nothing. Yeah, it was Everton Spurs. Um, I would like to. Oh yeah, Mostly. no, that was a good FA Cup match. Everton United uh, in the league this week, uh, this past weekend, was was also a crazy. Fun oh yeah, match. sorry, um, sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble keeping all these matches straight. They've been. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, Everton's just put putting out the bangers lately. Yeah, they they are in a, a good bit of form at the moment. Um, no, I, I didn't have anything specific outlined. I'd I'd love to bypass the FA Cup in general at the moment. Um, well, you guys have. Yes, Spurs have done that. Or shall, shall I say the cup has bypassed you? 
yeah, both of those things are accurate. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's been a, a difficult stretch for most of these teams to manage. It's a lot of competitions being squeezed into a very tight time frame, and the lingering effects of the COVID delays that we saw a month or so ago are, are definitely having an impact on, on how things are unfolding right now. So it's just a, it's a really interesting time uh, in English football to watch everything unfold. All right, let's go stateside. Uh, MLS news. We Well, the big news that came out this week was that uh, record scratch, false alarm, just kidding. It 17th of April is what we meant. The seven, 17th of April is when we will start. Um, yeah. as, as now that we have a ratified uh, CBA, which we... We hinted at uh, when we last talked that would look like that was hours away from being taken care of. It essentially was by Friday. It was officially ratified through all the voting by Monday. So we have a CBA. We have no lockout. We have a season that is ready to start. Uh, but hold on, just kidding. It's going to start on the 17th of April, not the 3rd of April, um, which I believe our, our buddy uh, Pat Brennan from the Inquirer pointed out like, in 2019, by the 17th of April, uh, FC Cincinnati was getting ready to play like their eighth match of the season. To mm-hmm. give you an idea of how like late into the season that is of a start. Yeah, and they're still talking about trying to cram in a full season, which is just okay. Good luck with that. Yeah, I mean, I get get ready to. It, that this is gonna. I mean, that's gonna be perfect. MLS is like all these stadiums will be allowed to go to at a hundred percent capacity at the later stages of the season when it's too cold to actually want to show up and be in the stadium. Everyone who's been asking for that winter schedule will finally get to test it, huh? Oh, this is why we don't want to be like, Hey, hey you're the same fans that were complaining about getting a, a home game in, in March uh, at the, of the season. Like, December also sucks to stand outside. Surprise. Uh, things that also suck, uh, at least for teams from Canada, um, they still don't really know how they're going to be playing. Totally homeless. Yeah. Uh, Vancouver sounds like they've lined up a home in Salt Lake, which has become basically the Florida of the West when it comes to pro sports leagues trying to get their thing on. Yeah, I mean, it worked pretty well for the NWSL. Yeah, that's true. They had that uh, challenge cup back in the, I don't know, months run together. At some point in 2020, that existed. It was mm. incredible. Um, it seemed to go out, off without too many hitches. At least none of the hitches happened uh, once they got there. They all happened before then or on possible flights to there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was, I think, happened in the post Tiger King portion portion of the uh, the pandemic. That is a good like marker as far as like when was that? Was that pre or like, post Tiger King? I mean, but isn't it funny? Like Tiger King was such a big deal for like a good three week stretch, and now we think I think about that. I'm like, was that like two years ago? It feels like that was two years ago. It's a decade ago. Like, I couldn't even tell you any of the quotes. I forgot everybody's name. I forgot everybody's name in that documentary. There was the tiger. Wear shirts. There was a tiger, a king, and uh, Carol Baskin. That's literally the only thing I remember uh, anymore. There's right? the person that got uh, their arm uh, taken off. Um, and then, yeah. And then there was a bunch of uh, spoiled, uh, rancid meat from Walmart. On pizzas. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's the type of MLS season we're going to get, it seems like. Um, we're going to get the rancid meat. meat yeah. Uh, meat lover's pizza. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to get in a U.S. Open Cup in 2021, which is interesting, if nothing else. For some. Limited engagement. Yeah, some of it, you know. not Invite not only, much. as always. And the, there's just not as many invites. Uh, what is it? Eight? Eight MLS teams, eight USL teams. I think they're gonna like randomly draw two NPSL teams out of a hat, and it'll we'll all be surprised when 
the frozen envelope says Detroit City. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Here is a grab bag of the two teams that were fined from NISA. It'll be, it'll be either uh, Oakland's in the USL now. So oh yeah, that. it'll be those two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So it, yeah, it's a smaller set of 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 teams. So not all MLS teams are qualifying. They haven't put out the parameters of who does qualify. Going to go ahead and assume it's the FC Cincinnati did not. Yeah, it's a safe it's assumption, time. but it's also like. There will definitely be teams who will qualify by whatever the imaginary standards are that get made up for this, who will also say, we're not interested. No, we're good. <laughs> that's, that's what will kill me about that's, this. That's, that's going to be a hard pass. <laughs> like, ooh, uh, we, that just, we don't want to fit that into the schedule this year. Seems I like mean, a... As much as it sounds fun to go play, uh, you know... <laughs> To, to take a bus and play that game in uh, Wichita or whatever. Uh, we don't want to do it. We're out. All right. Fair enough. Um, yeah, but no, uh, MLS is is creeping toward us. Uh, it seems we will also get a USL season uh, as well. So lots of excitement. Oh, I was going to say, why why was that even in doubt? They they like didn't even... they that, that bus didn't stop last year. I don't know why they would somehow... <laughs> Make yeah, it, it was, sessions this year. Yeah, another little set of micro tournaments within within that organization, I'm sure. But um, no, it, it, we're going to get a full slate of uh, American soccer here in the very non too distant future. Um, anything else you wanted to hit on? Uh, FC Cincinnati uh, possibly bringing in one or two or zero former MLS DPS. Yeah. Uh, potentially five DPs on this roster. Sure, uh, that's come, allowed, right? I, yeah, I haven't read right. the whole CBA yet. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of things to unpack about how any of this will make sense should any of it come to fruition. Uh, it does very much seem that they are still pursuing Pity Martinez, but that's not what you're referring to. You're referring no. to Kellen Mucho Mucho Acosta. Yeah, Mucho Acosta, uh, the former DC United standout who, who was previously linked to PSG. Uh, I, he went to great. Atlas. Yeah, he did. I looked. I mean, it it seems like I don't know if there was like a regime change or something, but it it does appear that like he has not been getting like regular starting uh call ups for it looks like since like I don't know late fall. He hasn't really been like, uh, at, you know, on that starting 11 sheet every week. So it seems like his position within a little up in the air a bit as far as uh, playing time and being kind of one of those featured players, which obviously if he goes to MLS, there's really no question about the amount of playing time he's going to get. So it, it makes sense from that standpoint. Uh, DC United still has his rights. So even though it did not sound like that relationship ended too well between the between the player and DC United, uh, not a Ben Olsen fan, not a Ben Olsen fan, mm-hmm. um, it, it, it seems like DC United is going to at least, for the sake of milking FC Cincinnati for as much money as possible, uh, feign interest in wanting to sign him themselves. Hashtag player placement mechanisms. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, what's wild to me about the Acosta approach, which it, it'd be a hell of an acquisition in its own right, is if the pity thing is actually something they're still pursuing too, that <laughs> that that they they're going to be a team that's like never had a ten to suddenly having two of them, and I'm very aware New that formation. both of these guys are capable of playing in wide attacking roles too, and. Like, those are the type of problems you can figure out if you can have them. But, like, DP-wise, that, that's two DPs between Martinez and um, uh, and, and Pity, right? Uh, and, then, yeah. and then you're also, or excuse me, uh, uh, Costa and Pity. And then you also have Lucadia, who's still in the equation. You have Brenner as a I young guess. DP. Uh, Kubo is technically a DP, but you'd need to buy sure. him down with some of the imaginary 
allocation money that you will not have spent to acquire either Acosta and or the allocation spot necessary to acquire Pity Martinez. Uh, I got to love the mechanisms. Um, yes. I mean, I think that there's a couple workarounds in that. One of them being uh, Lacadia just goes on back to Brighton because the season ain't starting until mid-April and his his loan ends in what, like the end of June. Mm. So why don't you just take it on back to the house now, buddy? That That could be one way to alleviate that situation. Yeah, uh, there's also talk of potentially, uh, well, not potentially, Frankie Amaya has handed in a transfer request. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, that just extra little wrench thrown into the situation of like, hey, uh, you know that guy that was like, you know, the honestly, like a, a kid that's been getting a lot of minutes, consistent player, uh, apparently there were multiple million plus offers uh for him that fc cincinnati was like no nah, we're good and now frankie maya is saying yeah i'm out i want to leave please trade me well when you're trying to bring in a bunch of dp level tens and you're a attacking midfielder i kind of would understand why that might be a little tough pill to swallow and you might be looking for greener pastures do you just then like give Frankie to Austin for the alloc- for the, uh, the 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 pity rights? I'm sure it's being uh, c- considered. Although FCC are saying they won't be trading him, so uh, yeah. we will have to wait and see. They also said we they have- were going to contend last year, so they they do tend to say things that are patently false. They were also going to do that their first year in MLS, but you know, here we are. weren't we all? weren't we all? Um, that's all I got for, for MLS. So, uh, uh, winners and wankers. I think that's where we're at. Why don't you give me your wanker this week? Uh, my wanker, once again, the annual rolling of the eyes for me, it goes to soccer Twitter's annual vocal displeasure that the Super Bowl exists and that they have to acknowledge it. Guy, Hey guys, we get it. You're not, you're not into football. We, we got it. Heard it. <laughs> We get it. You don't like it, but it's like this thing that America does, which you're an Anglophile, so you know that's not cool to you. We got it. Just, just take the night off. Take the night off. Go have fun somewhere else. Drink yourself into a stupor. I don't care. We get it. You don't care for the NFL. Uh, as someone who is certainly guilty of making this tweet in the past, uh, and I'm, I don't know how long ago it's been. I would think it's been at least a few years. The internet is forever. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, it's been long enough that I know it wasn't this year. But at a minimum, I will say, agreed, uh, you look like a total chode when you try to prove to everyone how little you like football. But I will give you some advice. If you're trying to find something to do, if you're in cold weather climbs, uh, and you're into riding the snow at all, skiing oh, yeah. and snowboarding during the Super Bowl, perfect time to go and do it. Very. That you do that most people. years, don't you? Uh, it's 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 a bit of a tradition for me, yeah. So I guess you. So I guess a follow up question: You did not watch the Super Bowl, did you? Uh, I did actually this year. I, I did not make it out skiing, um, unfortunately. But it's it it will be something that I plan on doing in Super Bowls in the future. Uh, what did you think about the halftime show? Were you for it or against it? If people, I feel like people were so hot and cold on it. <sighs> I've uh, I've struggled to form an opinion about it. <laughs> we'll just say that like, much. Like it's, I care so little that I don't care what the weekend is doing with diapers on his face or jock straps or you know whatever it might be. I enjoyed it. I, I'm. I'm hey, not, the kids it, enjoyed it. The kids were dancing around. That's all and then we want, and then right? and then we told the twins that like, oh yeah, he's actually he's Ethiopian, and they thought that that was even better. Oh, I'm sure. You know, that's that made for a, a win in the Lance household if I could ever hear one. They were like, so he's from Ethiopia. I was like, now nah, he's from like Toronto, but he's <laughs> he's Ethiopian. There you go. It's the same thing. Um, my wanker this week, uh, I'm not giving it to Mike Dean, 
uh, or even Lee Mason, uh, who are totally wankers in most of the time uh, as referees who very frequently piss off the fan bases of the, sure. Sure. you know, the matches they're in charge of. Um, but I'm totally going to give it to people who are involved with the situation that involve them being total idiots. Uh, Mike Dean sent off West Ham's Thomas Susek uh, for an errant elbow to Alexander Mitrovich. Uh, over the course of the last week, uh, even VAR's Lee Mason, uh, his assistant for the match, uh, had a look, and the two of them, bafflingly still together, upheld the red. Um, it, it's it was brilliant, like so quickly overturned upon appeal. Uh, yeah. Like literally, I feel like the second the appeal was lodged, the the disciplinary committee was like, yeah. "Yep, that's that's gone." Yeah, like I woke up Monday morning and that was that headline was already waiting for me. Like that was rescinded. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and that match between uh, West Ham and Fulham ended nil nil, by the way. So nothing of real consequence, you know, happened as a result, outside of you know West Ham not picking up you know more than a point out of the situation. Right. But the the fans who abused those two referees, not just to the point of like normal abuse you come to expect which is ridiculous in its own right but the death threats were so bad that like mike dean asked not to be put on a game this weekend yeah because he felt like his family was being put in jeopardy and just everything that was being circulating around it i hate referees as much as the next guy but that's just a a tad ridiculous and no one should have to be taking mental health weeks because they can't handle the pressure of death threats being leveled against them over a game. It's just unbelievable. Those uh, those East Londoners, they know how to keep a perspective. They really do, don't they? Uh, who is like, who would be the Premier League uh, referee that you're like, you know what? I think he does a good job. Like I would say out of the, like more often than not, I go, ah, good, good job, guy. I don't even know anymore. Kevin Friend. I'm going Kevin Friend because I always know when he does a match because he's he's he does a lot of matches and you know mm-hmm. him. And, hey, it's Kevin Friend. But like I I feel like I've I've never walked away and be like, boy, Kevin Friend just really took over that one. Oh man, I don't know that I've ever met a referee that I can't make into an enemy. You know what I mean? Like well, I just it's a hard well, it's a hard true. one. Someone's got to get yelled at and it's gonna be that guy. I mean, everyone has a talent that might be yours. Hating all referees. What a skill. Uh, 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 who's your winner this week? My winner, uh, got to go with Tigres. Uh, first oh, CONCACAF team. That's me to too. make it to the Club World Cup final. Yeah, they lost today to, uh, uh, to, to Bayern in the final. It was a tight one. It was a good one. I, I was actually kind of thrown off. I did not realize until they threw it out there that a CONCACAF team hadn't made it that far. I, I had figured that at some point in time, like Club America or one of, one of these, you know, Mexican juggernauts had, had succeeded in this wonky, like seven team tournament that they do in December. But, but apparently not. Apparently this was the first time and it, it was cool. Like I, I, I really found myself like wanting Tigres to win. Yeah, and I I wonder too. I I totally was on on T Race's side. I you you love Gignac getting an opportunity to have a run at another European squad, and there were times where you know they looked up against it, um, and and sure. were on holding on for dear life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but but they really they held they held Byron tight. The second half was a lot closer than I anticipated it would have been, and uh, while well, they eventually got sawn off and and, and lost. Uh, they they showed well for North America's behalf and yeah I I'm I'm also a little shocked that we've not yet seen that uh, a North American team make the final but hey that hopefully that means that bigger and better things are on the way for Concacaf and maybe someday we'll actually see an American side in there maybe one one can one can dream right everyone start holding your breath because it'll just be another tournament. Where, uh, you know, an MLS team is totally in season and ready to play, you know, because <laughs> exactly. I mean, they, what, this this tournament, I believe, is n- normally played in December, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So right. it'll literally be right 
after the MLS season comes to a complete end, that the team that I'm assuming probably made it to the playoffs, uh, if they were good enough to win the Champions League, uh, uh, like their season has just ended. They've probably just like contracts have just expired on guys. And then they have to go play this tournament. So it'll be a complete disaster. And they'll get a bunch of short term loans like teams do for the CONCACAF Champions League. And you'll <laughs> see, you know, D2 guys making the benches for MLS squads as they roll out a bunch of their, uh, you know, reserves and academy kids. Fun times. At least, they'll, at least they'll be able to handle the tough times against, you know, Auckland City or something like that. Mm. It'll be fun. Uh, your wanker or your winner, your winner. Uh, my winner was also T Grace. Yeah, like I was. Yeah. I'm on board it, with it, you. It was also. I'm just always a fan of soccer matches that take place like late morning or like noonish. Those are great. Um, which got me almost. I, I almost for a brief second there got excited that the World Cup is in Qatar next year. Because I'm like, ooh, I'm going to like these, like, you know, 10 a.m. and, like, 1 p.m. starts. These are good. Ooh. This is, like, right in, right in prime time here. I might, need to, I might need to pull off my wanker award with you giving uh, Qatar praise here. We're not, we're not allowed to do that on this podcast. We're not. And, and, and I, 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 I will uh, throw myself at the mercy of the court on that one. Yeah. We'll let Twitter handle that one. Oh, they will. Um, all right. I think that's it. I, I believe it is. Thanks for listening as always. If you want to get a hold of us, you don't. But if you did, Jeremy's at Jeremy Lance on Twitter. I am at Wrong Side of Pond. We'll talk to you guys sometime soon. Bye.